welcome, 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 welcome. Wow. Welcome, welcome to the pre-show. How are you doing, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's get us let this get this party started. Yes, let's get this party started. Welcome, EJ. Welcome. So we have about three minutes and twenty-four seconds before we get started, and I'm trying to um, use this time to get people engaged, involved, and I'm um, just trying to have some fun to get get the get the show on the road. So EJ waves, I wave back. Hey EJ, what's going on? All right, so about three minutes left. Um, I trying something a little bit. Every day I'm trying to do something a little more different, a little more different, kind of different. Just something to keep it interesting. Um, I didn't start it off with the with the music today because I wanted to because it seemed to be really loud when I was um, listening to it again. So what I'm trying to do is uh, just figure out the best way to get this stuff working. So let me see if I can click view. All right, I can see that. I want to be able to try and get add to broadcast. Can I do that? <gasps> Look at that. I can add EJs. Look at that. <laughs> EJ. Say something else. See what happens. So, learn something new about this application every single day. Look at that. I can like it. Okay. Let's see if it shows up again. Uh, no. So I have. What I have to do is, as soon as it comes up. I have to add it to the broadcast, and there it says, whoa, that's pretty cool. I love technology when it works. Woohoo! So now we're going to, what can I do to that? I can, oh, that's pretty neat. I'm going to have to play with that. All right, so about a minute and a half, um, when, when we do a um, Q&A, not now because I don't have the audience, but once I get the audience, uh, we're going to do a, a Q&A, and I'll bring those p those comments onto the screen, and we'll talk about it. So let's do that. All right. So if anybody's just joining us, thanks for joining. We're going to start in about less than a minute, and we're going to talk about Connected Geek Tech Tips. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, can I, I don't really need this on here, but can I do this? Oh, I can. That's cool. All right, so there are comments. That's neat. I agree. It is neat. It is very neat. Let's see if that neat shows up. Does it show up? Oh, well, it's, okay, yeah, that's cool. Then I have to click and to view the comments. So what I should do is get a secondary screen. All right, we'll work on that later. Okay, cool. All right, five seconds. All right, let's get started. Hello, humans, and welcome to the planet Earth. And welcome to Connect to Geek Tech Tips, day number eight. Because this is episode number eight on January 22nd, 2019. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having the time just to come out and just hang and listen, learn about tech that I'm going to impart upon you. Um, some of it's good, some of it's bad, but mostly it's good because I'm saying it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to be as um, honest and open about the technology that I know and I, and I love because I love technology and I love how, how it works. And I, um, I'm just a geek by nature. That's why it's keeping the world connected one geek at a time. And that's my, mo that's my logo. That's my mantra. That's my everything because I want everybody who loves technology to come along with this ride that I'm doing and learn about technology. If you can, if you have something to impart, if you have something to share, we're all going to learn together and I want to learn together with you. So let's try and learn something new together tonight. The topic tonight is about 
Mac versus PC versus Linux. So a PC is basically, you know, what you run your Windows computer on. Uh, a Mac is when you run your Mac OS operating uh, operating system on. And a Linux is a Linux operating system, which is based upon Unix, which is a very, one of the very first types of computer operating systems that was ever invented. Um, goes back to the old mainframe mentality. But before going to that, um, if you like what you see and like what you um, are hearing tonight, make sure you like and share so others can learn about this type of topic as well. And one thing that I, I like to give to you, if, if, if it's something that you want to use or need, is, is I do technology training. I do technology um, education. I also do, I can go into your environment and install wireless access points to fixing your desktop computer, replacing a hard drive, a, a screen. Also can build you a website and help you with your social media. But enough of that. We want to move on to why you came here in the first place is to learn about why a Mac could be pinched could be better than a PC, or it could be better than a Linux PC. The reason why I say Linux PC, because we'll learn about that in a minute, Linux and PCs use the same type of hardware. But here's a small thing you may not have known. The Mac operating system at its deepest core, can you guess it? It's Linux. It's, it's based upon Linux. So Linux is really, in my opinion, the most versatile operating system because it'll, it'll literally run on any hardware, piece of hardware. You can run Windows on a Mac in what they call a virtualized environment, but you cannot run a Mac on a Windows-based PC. But there's a small little asterisk there. You can, but there's a lot of work related to it. And it, most people don't like to do it. And that's called a Hackintosh. And because it is derived off the Macintosh mentality. So Macintosh, back in 1984, changed the world with their commercial. Changed their world with everything that they did related to how a PC was perceived. And when I say PC, that means... The personal computer was perceived. We today think the word PC is related to a computer or a, 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 um, a Windows-based computer. Really, the PC terminology was used long before uh, we we identify it today. It's really the personal computer is a Mac, a PC, a Linux, but we just identify it with a Windows-based computer. But Linux has been around longer than all of those put together because Mac was based upon that, like I said earlier. So I'm going to do something fun, and this I'm going to play a little video for you. And oh, before I go, that there, here's who I am. Um, I'm Larry, and these are how to find me. And oh, we don't need this on here anymore. The little timer, bye timer. Let's go off to the next thing, and we're talking about Mac versus Linux versus PC, obviously. Tomorrow we're going to talk about antivirus, the next day we're going to talk about IE. But I want to get to the reason why uh, I want to talk about the next thing, which is kind of fun, and hopefully it'll play. Let's see if it will. Come on. Come on, play. Oh, because I have to do it this way. There it goes. Ready? Here it comes. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Well, what's with the big hand? Well, I figured it's time to show the world my position. Really? Well, that's what I was trying to do with this ultra-hip t-shirt I designed on iLife. Hmm, number one. No one goofing off. <laughs> PC. Such a whiz of those numbers, you know that we can't both be number one. Okay. I was here first. That's debatable. <laughs> no, let's not argue about it. We were the only guys in town. Check us out. Look, look around, there's nobody else. You're right. No one else. <laughs> no one. <clears throat> Hi. 
I'm Linux. <laughs> and there are an estimated 30 million Linux users out there. How long have you been standing there? Long time. Boy, well, you sure grew up fast. <laughs> so, a long time ago, they had this video, obviously, of, of what was going on. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just funny. Uh, that was a uh, a play off the Mac versus PC commercials that was playing back in the early 2000s, and we're going to go play that one next. And it's one of my favorite ones. It's um, it's a great little spinoff when you know Vista was um, such a horrible operating system at the time, and uh, Windows was trying to do their best to fix it. Well, they didn't really know how to fix it. And so that's why Windows 7 came into play and Windows 7, which is so much better. Um, but check out this next video. Here it comes. All right. Here it comes, sir. Oh, I'm a Mac. Mac has issued a salutation. Cancel or allow? Allow. And I'm a PC. You're returning Mac salutation. Cancel or allow? Allow. Okay, what? Gives. Mac is asking a question. Cancel or allow? Allow. He's part of Vista, my new operating system. PCs have a lot of security problems, so he asked me to authorize pretty much anything I do. You're pointing out Vista's flaws. Cancel or allow? Allow. I could turn him off, but then he wouldn't give me any warnings at all, and that would defeat the purpose. So. You are coming to a sad realization. Cancel or allow? Allow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best. I love that more than anything. That's, that's just a, so, such a funny video. Um, but it just kind of shows that there's so much that um, the PCs, Windows PCs, had so many problems when it basically growing up. Windows 7, in my opinion, is probably the best operating system that they've ever built. Windows, you know, XP, Windows 98. Um, there was a little iteration of Windows ME, which is just as horrible as Vista, if not worse. Uh, Vista, obviously. Windows 2000, there was Windows 7, which is pr pretty much the best. Windows 8 had some problems. Windows 10 is probably one of the better ones, um, but it's still too gooey and or visual base, visually um, pleasing, as they would call it, or Metro. Windows 7 had a really good look and feel and had a really good overall appearance and customizable interfaces, applications would install better. You know, when you had Windows XP, you had a little more leniency in what you could and couldn't do because it was so open. Then they, had, they realized it was too open because they were getting viruses because Windows gets viruses like they're going out of style. And the, the main part with Windows since there's been so many different versions of it because they're trying to fix and fix and patch and patch, you know, there, there's, it, it has problems. And when you're just throwing so much change to it, your users don't know how to handle it. Sometimes there was a part, a time when windows eight came out and all it did, nobody wanted to use it because they changed the whole menu structure where it was geared towards a tablet based touch screen. And, Nobody wanted to deal with it. It was just such a, it's a such a pain. And then they finally, quote unquote, fixed it when they added the, the original menu back. Well, they really never made it go away. It's still there. It's you, I I do a specialized program that I install on all the computers that I've done for everybody I've ever used is called Classic Shell. That Classic Shell application allows. The Windows 8, Windows 10, to have the, the old style Windows 7 menu structure. It's helped a lot of people make the transition from Windows 7 to it because Windows 7 was around for so long that everybody didn't know how to migrate their mind to the new way of thinking when it came to the menu structure. So it's it's pe keeps people still using the new operating system and keeping safe and secure with windows because windows is pretty much the standardization that people use in the environments today. Uh, I'll get later in, in the discussion. We'll talk about how that's really not a big, de big deal today because more and more technology is moving towards the internet and we'll get into that a little bit later. 
The next piece of uh, information I'd like to impart part to you is in part to you. I'm trying to impart knowledge to you. <laughs> the, the knowledge that I'm giving to you is about Macs and about PCs and about Linux. And so the, what I found is there's 10 different, there's millions of different differences between all three of them, but here's like the top 10 differences I've noticed between Macs, PCs, and Linux. Now keep in mind, as I said earlier, Macs and Linux have the same underlying operating system, which is both Linux. It's, Mac has just taken that version and made it their own. They made it their own unique Mac iteration. Um, it still has um, what it's called Unix, which is the, one of the oldest operating systems around. Um, OS, OS, OS Warp is probably one of the very old, oldest from uh, IBM. We're not even going to get into that. But Linux has been around a very, very, very long time. And what I love about Linux, it gives us the opportunity to install on pretty much any piece of hardware, including a Mac. Most people don't do it because the hardware is so proprietary, it's very difficult to manage. So Mac has done their very best to make sure that nobody can manipulate their hardware and their software because they've locked things down so much. It happens the same way with their their mobile devices and everything. You just can't really get into it and get into the, the guts of it like you can with a Windows machine. And that's why I think Windows is very so much more susceptible to viruses and everything because it just it's just an open architecture. Linux has a very open architecture as well, but they aren't there's a lot of people that gear their particular viruses towards Windows because they don't like that they're taking over the world. Anyway, let's go back down to here and talk about uh, some of the differences. So there's, here's the first, five, first four. There's design, price, choice, and availability. The first one is design. Like I mentioned earlier in the conversation, back in 1984, I don't have the video, but you can look it up. Just do Apple... Mac 1984, it has uh, a very um, beautifully done, if you see it in, high, in, in the best format in high def, if you can, 1984 video is nowhere near what to, video is today, but back in the day when they shot this video, it was, it was just like, it was just the biggest monumental thing people had ever seen, and um, it, all it is, is is a playoff of an old movie, I can't remember the name of the movie, but uh they, they, and it's, I think it's derived off the 1984 book, 1980, derived from the book called 1984 as well. Anyway, so they have this woman running and then she throws this hammer at, at the screen and it was just so jarring. It, it caused people to try to find out what was going on. And basically they were changing the face of computers literally and figuratively because it was all graphical and no one really had any graphic way of viewing their content on a computer prior to that time. So Mac changed the world for personal computers. So ever since then, um, ever since then, it, it just changed the way um, we did computers. One of the key factors of a Mac is the cost. The cost of of the compute of Mac's computers. Oh, um, I have to interject here. Manjaro. Well, Dave says that Manjaro. Uh, what is Manjaro, David? Did, did I miss something? I'm probably talking about the movie. And if you are, thanks for thanks for the in input. Going back to what I was saying with the the price, Apple tends to have a very high price point for Macs. I mean, to the point where pretty much the minimum you'll spend is about $1,000 for a Mac, which is ridiculous. You can find a Windows PC for like $200 and still do your job every day. And I already have Windows 10 installed and have absolute basic word processing with their WordPad if you wanted to, or you could just start using Google Drive or uh, any of the other free online web processors. So you can 
literally take your computer from the store, connect it to the internet and start working and do your job if you had to with a Windows PC for $200, $250. So it's, it's really that cheap. Now with a Mac, you're going to be spending a boatload of money for a very high end computer that you probably don't even need, unless you're going to be t using, using it for, um, graphics or video editing or some sort of design program like CAD or something. But Windows can do that as well today because over time, both the Mac and the PC and the Linux operating system have been very growing towards the same goal of using the same type of hardware. They can all use the same type of interaction with the PC that you're using. So price point is extremely important when you're, when you're buying a computer. Um, but it's all relative to what, how much your budget is. Oh, I forgot to highlight this next part. There is five on here. There is a technical specifications. So now, like I was just, I was just saying that I already, I already went to the next point. Basically the test there, most of them are start, starting to have the same specs. They're all, so if you bought a brand new Mac and you bought a brand new PC, Windows PC, and if they're both an i7 processor, which we talked about a little bit yesterday, you pretty much have the same computer, both one with Windows and one with Mac. You can do the same thing with Linux. And it's all about feature set. Which, which features do you want in your choice of computer? And which leads me into the next question, choice. So, you just got to choose which one fits your personality. Some people say, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Mac. I like, I like Macs because I like the, the sleekness. I like the, the ease. I can literally turn the computer on and it start working. Well, nowadays you can do the same thing with a windows PC. However, as one of the, the Mac versus the Mac P versus PC commercials indicated, um, I didn't show it, but if you just look, look it up and do Mac PC and, uh, and just watch the, there's like 60 of them. There's a, it's crazy. I didn't realize there were so many of them, uh, but they are they're so funny. Uh, but they, they talk about the differences and how one's really sleek and one's really powerful. But one of the, one of the, one of the commercials said, Oh yeah, I'm out of the box. I'm ready to run and do our life. The other one says, well, I still got to, you know, run my windows updates. I got to, um, uninstall all the bloatware, which is what I call it bloatware, which is basically all these software that other vendors install on the windows computer just based upon what they think you need. So you have to uninstall all that stupid stuff. And so that it doesn't run down the computer with the Mac. They don't do that. They just give you what you need and you just go, which is a grand thing about that. Same thing with the Linux operating system. You basically install it and just add on what you need. Same thing with the Mac. Unfortunately, windows, got a lot of um, vendors to help support their cause, so to speak. And they've all they've done is just added these extra. So if you do get like an HP or a Dell, you get all these extra utilities that you don't necessarily need. It's just to help supposedly help the computer run more efficiently or faster, but it really doesn't. It's there's, you can run windows straight, straight out of the, the box bare bones and it'll work perfectly on your computer. There are some utilities you can get that'll help us, oops, excuse me, which will streamline it a little bit, but out of the box of a standard computer that you buy from the store, if you reloaded windows from scratch, it, it would run, if not better, much more cleaner than if you got it from the store. Anyway, the availability is you can get it. Like I was mentioned earlier, you can get a windows PC at slash Linux. Uh, at almost any store that sells hard, that sells computers. I mean, like Best Buy, Micro Center, um, Office Max, Costco, Sam's Club, all those places can get, you can buy a computer, Windows computer, pretty much anywhere at any time, ranging from two, 200, 250 to two thousand dollars, depending on what you're trying to do with it. If you're going to buy like an Alienware computer, like we mentioned yesterday, you're going to spend a lot of money up to like $4,000 possibly, depending on what you're trying to do with it. 
You can do the same thing with a Mac. Now, both of those computers potentially could run Linux if you wanted to, but most likely you'd probably run it on uh, the, alien, the Alienware because it does have a faster, proce faster processor, faster bus speed. We're not going to get into bus speed because that's more of a hardware, deep hardware construct um, conversation that maybe one day we'll have. <laughs> so going back to availability, it's all about where you, where you can get it from. Now the next slide, let's go to the next slide. And all right, there's a lot of information on this one. Now we're going back to, to operating system, the 10, ten differences. So you got you know, Mac, Linux, and very, Mac and Linux are very stable. Other than Windows 7, as I mentioned earlier, Windows has had a lot of up and downs. And I personally have always liked Windows 7. I thought it was the best Windows operating system they've ever invented there and people still use it today and windows 7 has been around a long time um i'll have to look up the exact date and time uh, the date it came out but it's i've used it my whole computer career and i still have a windows 7 computer in my house that i we still use and it works perfectly i mean i'm it's, it's not getting patched anymore but what it's used for is superfluous. It just kind of just sits there and just does one up one particular job. It does nothing more than that. It plays my music. That's really what it does. <laughs> Excuse me. And but Mac has done their their versions over time. Linux has done their versions over time, and most of them have been really stable. Stable. It's the same. What Mac has done, and you may have noticed it if you're a Mac user, it's becoming more and more the same as your smartphone. It's having the same feature set as, as your smartphone because more people are using smartphones than ever before in the, in the world. And they want their computer experience to mimic what's happening on the phone so people can make the, the transition much more smoothly. And you want to make sure that when you buy the operating system, our computer, it has the latest and greatest operating system because it's, it has the most security and most patches than other. Because every single operating system has um, some sort of patching that it needs to do. Every time Mac goes to the next version of their like Lion or Mountain Lion or whatever they want to call it, they all they're doing is just patching it because they found vulnerabilities that they want to do. Windows just patches it. They call it Patch Tuesday and then you, just, you get a whole bunch of patches there every Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, next is the users. And I've, I've talked about this throughout the conversation. The, the user, it's all about preference, right? Your preference is what works best for me is, do I like it that the X is in the top left-hand side or, or a little red dot for when, for Mac? and Linux, or do I like my red X in the top left, top right for top right for Windows? That's just one small attribute of your experience when you're using a Mac or a PC or Linux. But as I mentioned earlier, earlier in the conversation, we as a society, probably 75% now, it's, it's, it's growing back close, closer to 50, um, in my opinion, more and more people are getting, it doesn't matter what kind of computer, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, but still a Windows-based computer is still the most widely used computer in the world because they interconnect so nicely. They connect to uh, a server in your environment or in the cloud, and if you use a Windows computer consistently, you know that there's an option to do control alt delete and then you type in your password. That means you're logging into a centralized environment that allows administrators such as myself to control what can be done on the computer. Everything from icons to on your desktop being appeared out of nowhere to what you have access to file system wise. So your computers can, so you, you can access Word documents and Excel documents collaboratively in the environment based upon those Windows shared permissions and shared environments. So users all come down to um, 
are you a fan of Windows or are you a fan of Linux or are you a fan of Mac? And which one is the most preference? And a lot of a lot of companies are allowing you to bring in your own computer and connect it to the environment because as I mentioned later in the conversation, more and more environments are becoming all of the data and all of their applications are becoming web-based. And so it doesn't really matter what computer you bring to the bring to the table. As long as you're doing the job on the systems that the company is asking you to use them for. Next one is software and the software is Windows has more, more choices. Unlike Mac and Linux, the software is, is, is mostly going to the web lately, like, like I just said. So it really doesn't matter. Your software is based upon typically what, what platform um, your company needs. So if your company needs a uh, application that's Windows based, most likely all of your, all of your computers in your environment will become Windows. Now, uh, if it's like a Unix or Linux based application, like I wasn't in my last position, um, you need, you needed to have a windows based computer, but you, if you bought a specialized application for the Mac, it would work. It was kind of, kind of clunky, but it would work. And, but you, you're still doing a windows based function on a Mac machine. So it's. It's all based upon what your, your company needs and how it's going to impact your everyday business. So if you're doing 99% of the stuff on the web, you can bring a Mac, a Linux, a PC all day long, and it doesn't matter what you're doing, but it's all down to making sure that you're safe and secure, which brings me to the next one, security. So in the history of Macs, Linux, Windows, I've only heard in the history of Macs in my, in my, in my journey through life, when it comes to computers, I've only seen one Mac virus ever occur. And I don't know if it was even true or not. So you still can buy antivirus for your Mac. You still can buy antivirus for your Linux. You can still buy, and obviously you can buy antivirus for your windows, which we'll talk about tomorrow or tomorrow's our antivirus discussion. In the, in the history of, of me working on computers, I've only noticed that Windows is only, has had this problem. No one, no other operating system, any other operating system has had a virus problem because more people don't like Windows because they've taken over the world, right? The, so the, the hackers and the virus creators build it towards a Windows based environment. So I just recently worked with a client and they had a, um, open up a email attachment on their windows computer inside of outlook. And all of a sudden, all of their contact lists got, um, this attachment saying, Hey, it's an invoice from, from me to you open it. Well, as soon as you open up that attachment, guess what? It becomes your computer comes in infected and it sends it, that same exact attachment to their contact list. So windows obviously has this perpetuation to want people that the, the hackers and the virus creators to perpetuate itself. And they, they seem to get a kick out of that. So in my, in my travels, I've, I've noticed that the best customer satisfaction, you know, Dell and HP seem to have a pretty good handle on windows based customer support. They're okay. You know, there's Acer, Asus, all of the other ones that we talked about yesterday, everyone tries to strive to be a better customer service provider, but bar none, if you, it's all about experience and the experience that I've, I've encountered the Mac Apple genius guys at the store. It's always so busy. It's always crazy in there, but, uh, those folks, they truly, from my experience, have gone truly out of their way to make sure that your experience with your Apple computer, smartphone, equipment, whatever, is working and does work right. I mean, I bought a set of head headphones in that I washed. I gave, I gave them, I said, they're not working anymore. 
They just gave me a new pair. Didn't even, didn't even question it. They just did it. They just, so it was still under the time frame of, of the warranty and boom, taken care of. No problems at all. So I found this really great um, article. Um, it's it's here, and I'll put it in the notes at the bottom of, of the of the show. It gives you a really good difference between Mac and PC. It doesn't really give you a really good overall view of what Mac of Linux does, but this, as I mentioned before, Linux is pretty much the same as Mac, and when it comes to the under underlying factors. All right, the next piece is. Let's go back to here. Hello, come back. There I am. All right, get to water. So I've already discussed this piece where it talks about the apps and the solutions and the computer tools are slowly moving to the internet. It just seems to be going get like gangbusters. More and more people are moving that way. And it's, it's going to continue that way. <laughs> Excuse me. Back in the early days of computers, a lot of computers um, were called green screens. Well, green screens typically were just basically what they called, they actually called it this, was it called a dummy terminal. It di didn't hold any data, it didn't hold any information, it just basically was a direct connection back to the main computer in the server room. And guess what? That was Unix. And Unix would have all these dummy terminals throughout the company, wherever they were. They would connect to, back into that environment, and you just do your work from that green screen computer. Well, what's happening is it's we we all we the personal came, computer came into play, and everybody wanted to hold their data close to them, and they didn't want anybody to have it, and they didn't want anybody to take it away. I want my computer. I want my data. What was happening over time is that the hard drives were getting bigger and people were saving more and more information and people were getting more and more, I guess, careless or um, just, oh, just adding more and more data. And so over time, they, they were not getting their data where they needed it. So if their computer crashed or died, oh my, all my data is gone. I didn't do a backup. Oh my gosh, what do I do now? So companies and solutions and all these big companies that a long time ago had these mainframes changed their, changed their model to allow what we call today cloud. So the cloud that you connect to is really just a whole bunch of mainframe style computers that your computer connects to. You still can save a lot of the data locally on your, on your computer, but more and more of it's putting pushed back out to the cloud so they can house, house, they can house it for you and they can control it. They can back it up. They can make sure it's safe. Uh, one of the big switches was Microsoft had an email platform called exchange. It's still there. Not very many people are still living in the Microsoft exchange world inside their, their buildings or their, their, their it's called on-prem or on-premises. They're moving that mail and all of that function out to the cloud, which is called office 365 or exchange 365, where you can keep all your mail in the cloud and you can access it from your phone. You can access it from your computer, anywhere you have a device that's connected to the internet. So what they're doing is they're taking all of that function and all of that heartache off of administrators and putting it onto their administrators and charging anywhere from four to $6 a month to, per user per month to offset that cost. So they can make sure that your email is available to you at all times. And I've talked about smartphones, you know, more and more people are in that. A really, another good article that I found was Mac versus OS, the 15 reasons why you should use Linux instead of Mac. It's a really long article and has really good information. If you get a chance, check into it. All right, the next one is, let's go to the next one. This was just a, a, a neat little article. It was an info, infographic that I found uh, the next one is going to be even better than this, but I, I thought this was really, it had like six, five or six different 
basic comparisons between all three and here's just a snippet of it and I think it's it just shows how much Windows, Mac and Linux have changed over the years and the differences that people are finding that they find more unique to them and why it's important to them to have um, choices on how you want your computer experience to be. We're so used to the Windows mentality and how everything is laid out. But now and nowadays, if you're using like Google Chrome or Firefox, all of your settings and all of your data comes with you. And you know, your, your address books, your emails, your if you have a Gmail account, all of your shortcuts, all that kind of thing just follows you. So it really doesn't matter where you log into and what you're doing. So the the screen that's sitting in front of you, it could be it could be anything as long as you just need to understand how how it works. One of the things that we need to take into consideration is the learning curve. The learning curve of if you're, let's say you're tired of the Windows environment and you want um want to start using a Mac. Well, that that mindset, that shift change in your brain where things are, because Windows as a whole has this really, in my opinion, a really good file structure in Windows Explorer. I love the Windows Explorer and how, how it's laid out. Some people can't stand it. They like the the Finder inside of Mac. And I don't know what it's called in Linux, but basically the, that particular file structure is all unique to them. And they, they understand people who start using that product or that, that operating system seems to like how it fits inside their structure of their brain so it, they can find their information more efficiently. One of this, the next one I have is this, this, this another comparison, and, and it's just a snippet of it, but it's it's one of the best infographics I've seen and related to, I'm not going to put the whole infographic on here, but basically it's on which our operating system is for you. And it goes um, into, uh, is it in the privacy of your own home, or, or just work, friends, honest, or we're just friends, honest. Everything I, I've done, I've done nothing to hide. So basically, it's it's kind of taking you through a flow chart of which which one is best for you. Um, what 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 do you use your main your computer for? Then it kind of takes you to the next phase. I would really strongly suggest looking at this. I'll put the links in the show notes, and it kind of gives you a really good idea of what type of computer person you are and what kind of operating system works for you. Um, you. I'm sure most of you probably, or some of you have taken those tests to tell you what kind of person you are. <clears throat> if you know, if you know anything about me, I'm a geek and I, um, so what kind of star Wars character are you or what kind of, um, Harry Potter character are you? So, you know, you've taken those tests where you, um, what kind of Marvel character are you? So you, you click through all the buttons and it tells you that you are this particular type of character or you have these tendencies. Well, this little infographic, this flow chart does a similar thing to you and you can walk you through. I thought it was just a fun little five second look through to, to help you understand what your, what kind of computer matches your personality. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for taking the time to hang out with me and talk about um, Mac versus PC versus Linux. I appreciate you taking the time to um, listen to me talk about this technology thing. And I think it's been good for me because I like sharing my knowledge with you. I like hanging out with you. So if you like what you've seen, um, just go over to my um, website at connectedgeek.net. There's um, all kinds of information about me, about my company. If you want to schedule an appointment with me to talk about this kind of thing, there's a button up at the top. If you want to watch any of my other videos it just go back um on the video section of my connected geek um, page and they're all there we're on episode number eight i believe and we're going to continue doing this every single day monday through friday saturday or sunday we're going to do a, a recap of the of the week typically with a guest um if i don't have a guest i will be um recapping myself um but if you guys um 
have any comments, questions, ideas, bring them on. And uh, thank you for taking the time with me. And check out my website, connectedgeek.net, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Oh, by the way, be excellent to each other.